It's extraordinary. And another opponent to Whoa. lose. What a head kick. To get it. It's all over. A spectacular finish. Just like that. That's a bang. Oh. Done. What's up, everyone? We're back with another episode of The Fight Corner. Episode number five, taking a look back at UFC 300. What an amazing card definitely lived up to my expectations and I think it exceeded a lot of other people's expectations who were kind of putting a bit of a downer on this card saying it should have been bigger it should have been better and I think it lived up to the hype massively and then we'll also have a brief look at the fights that were just announced by Dana White at the press conference after UFC 300 if you don't already know you're about to know some big news coming out from the UFC so let's get right into it in the main event, we had Alex Pajeda taking on Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill trying to regain his belt after relinquishing it due to that Achilles injury. And Alex Pajeda looking to defend his belt that he recently took off of Yuri Prohoshka. And in the first round, Pajeda landed some good low kicks, which I think everyone was expecting, backing up Hill. Nothing of consequence really happened until Hill had a little bit of a low blow on Pajeda. Herb Dean tried to step in to call a stop to the action, but Bejeda calmly just pushed him to the side and said no. Herb Dean backed off, and a few seconds later, Bejeda cracked Jamal Hill with that left hook, dropped him, followed up with some ground and pound until Hill was out cold. And then replay, you can see that that left hook rolled Hill's eyes back in his head, and it really just kind of skimmed him with the knuckles. So, Pajeda's got some serious power, which I think everyone already knew, but I mean, to start someone like Jamal Hill like that, send his eyes rolling back into his head, where you're not even catching him flush with the whole fist, I mean, I, I can't even think about what that must feel like. In the post-fight interview, Pajeda did call to be on that Brazil card at UFC 301 in three weeks' time. And he called for that fight to be at heavyweight against Tom Aspinall, which would just be absolutely insane. I don't think the UFC is going to do that. I think they would much rather go down the route of having the rematch with Yuri Prohachka. But, I mean, anything is possible. And I'm here for it if they put that fight on. Three weeks, Brazil, heavyweight championship. I mean, why not? Crazier things have happened. In the co-main event, we had Zhang Wei Li taking on Yan Shaonan for the Women's UFC Strawweight Championship. Both throwing some serious heat in the opening exchanges. Yan had a really nice takedown. Wei Li did hit a nice hip toss into side control and transitioned into mount, landed some real good strikes, and went up to the back and finished this round with a fully locked in rear naked choke. And Yan didn't tap. But at the bell, when Wiley let go, Yan was clearly out. Maybe not out completely, but she was out, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, and was really lucky to not have the fight called at that point. In the second, more great grappling from Wiley, and with two minutes left, she had Yan totally flattened out and was landing some lefts and rights, and it really looked bad for Yan. But Herzog let it keep going. Yan survived. But she ended up getting stuck in a head and arm choke that was really tight. But Jan did slip out and ended up on top position uh, in a really great scramble and actually ended the round on the feet. In the third, really good round for Jan, hurting Wiley on several occasions. And she showed a lot of heart coming back from those first two rounds where she could have easily have been finished in both. And the fourth, Jan again hurting Wiley in the early round, but Wiley was able to get the fight back to the ground and really showed her dominance again in the grappling department, landing short shots and controlling the position from the back. And just like how Jan had a really good bounce back performance in the third round, this was a really nice comeback round for, for Zhang Wiley as well. 
And in the fifth, it was just more grappling dominance from Wiley. She was able to get two takedowns, one really early in the round. Jan was able to work her way back up to the feet, uh, but Wiley hit another really nice takedown and was able to control the fight on the ground for the rest of the round and really landing some good short shots um, and just not letting Jan be able to kind of get back to her feet or get to any kind of dominant position. And Weili Zhang takes her belt back to China with a unanimous decision victory over a very tough, very game Yan Xiaonan. And in what is basically known as the people's main event, we got Justin Gaethje taking on Max Holloway. And my God, this is one for the ages. Really great opening round from Holloway, landing really good shots in the feet and even stumbling Gaethje. But Gaethje landed some decent shots of his own and some hard leg kicks that did do some serious damage that you could visibly see on Holloway's leg. But at the end of the round, Holloway hit Gaethje with that spinning back kick right with the heel to the nose of Gaethje and it smashed his nose completely, just busted it, not sideways, but or any kind of crazy disfigurement, but you could tell it was broken and it definitely had an effect on Justin going forward. In the second, both were having success, but Holloway was just leading the dance that little bit more, landing the cleaner, more accurate strikes. Gaethje still landing a few of those hard leg kicks. And Holloway did have two eye pokes in that round, one to each eye, which obviously with that broken nose, is not going to help Gaethje at all going forward in this fight, but Max was clearly winning this round as well. And the third, more good, clean, accurate strikes from Holloway to the head and to the body, hurting Gaethje, but Gaethje still throwing to the lead leg and really doing a lot of damage, but Holloway does not seem to be bothered at it at all, moving really good still, but it's definitely hurting him for sure. In the fourth, both guys hurting each other, Holloway landing several hard shots that seem to freeze Gaethje, obviously with that broken nose, once you start getting tapped again, it's it's very jarring and does not feel good, not that getting punched by Max Holloway I'm sure feels good at any time, but when you got a busted nose like that, you've been taking some punishment through three previous rounds, it's definitely going to take its toll on you. Um, but Holloway didn't follow up on any of these times when he kind of froze Gaethje and Gaethje did land a good shot behind the ear that dropped Holloway but he recovered well and that could be the first round that might have gone to Gaethje but again I don't think so definitely that one for Max in my books as well and in the fifth Holloway really hurt Gaethje in this round backing up to the fence and really looking for the finish throwing an amazing combination of varied strikes. Gaethje was able to tough it out and survive though, but at the end of the round, when that 10 second clapper went, Holloway pointed to the ground and basically said, let's fucking do it. Reminiscent of that fight he had with Ricardo Lamas, and they threw down like the warriors they are. And with two seconds left on the clock, Holloway lands a beautiful right hand, a bit of a mix between a hook and an overhand, and put Gaethje to sleep face down on the canvas. Mark Goddard called the fight with one second left on the clock. And at this point, I was going absolutely mental, just screaming. I could not believe what I had just seen. It was incredible. In all of my time of watching MMA, I don't think I've seen, I don't want to say a better knockout than that because there's been cleaner ones. There's been, you know, ones with slightly better technique. But that was just for the moment, for how it went down. It was incredible, and I have to agree with Joe Rogan that that is probably the best KO in the history of the UFC. I mean, I'm sure there are, as I said, lots of other savage ones, maybe slightly better technique, but that's got a lot going for it at this point. UFC 300, the BMF title, how Holloway called for the throwdown with 10 seconds left and then slept him. I mean, I don't know. That's pretty goddamn special in my books. And I don't know what's going to be next for Holloway, but I think he calls the shots now for whatever is next. Hopefully he gets that shot with Deporia at 145, and they can do that in Spain. But yeah, the world's his oyster at this moment, and what else can you say? That was just special. That's it. 
Next on the card, Charles Oliveira taking on Armand Sarukian. This is another fight that I was really looking forward to, and it did not disappoint. It was a real great back and forth in that first round, and off of a sprawl by Oliveira from a Sarukian takedown, you could see Oliveira was already trying to set up that arm and guillotine, trying to get his knee on the inside of Sarukian's arm. And when Sarukian went to stand up, Oliveira jumped on the guillotine and it was super tight. You could see it in Sarukian's face, but he didn't give up. He kept moving, fighting the hands, pushing on the legs, and eventually got out and nearly lost his shorts in the process. Oliveira ended up in mount though from this, looking for strikes, but Sarukian was eventually able to reverse the position and land some good shots of his own on the ground. Oliveira did throw an up kick that glanced off of the shoulder of Sarukian and hit him in the face, which caused a stop in the action, but it seemed to not really bother Sarukian at all, who wanted to keep going and didn't really want that stoppage at all, and they restarted back in Oliveira's guard, and he was able to use butterfly hooks to elevate Sarukian and get the fight back to the feet for the end of the round. Just a really great start to this fight. In the second, Oliveira landed a solid right hand at the beginning of the round, and Sarukian landed the seldom seen axe kick and it was beautifully executed i mean i've never seen something like this that's something you see like in the movies and sarukian was able to get the fight to the ground on his own and really took advantage of this landing some solid elbows cutting up Oliveira, and, and really doing some serious damage in the third sarukian again able to get the fight to the ground landing some solid ground and pound but when he went to take Oliveira's back, he got a bit ahead of himself and gave Oliveira the opportunity to get back to his feet, which allowed him to look for a submission of his own and did lock up a Darsh choke, but he never had an angle on it. He never got the legs involved, never got onto his hip. So Sarukian was never in any real danger from this near the end of the round. And it that's how it did finish in that near submission position. Um, but Sarukian immediately jumped to his feet when the bell rang. You could see he was not in any real danger. And this fight ended in a split decision. 29-28 times 2 for Sarukian and 29-28 by the other judge for Oliveira. Great performance by both guys. I think Sarukian had this one won easily uh, on the judges' scorecards. And it'll be really interesting to see who he gets paired with next. Because as we'll discuss a little later on, there has been some big moves in the lightweight division coming up. Kicking off the main card, we had Bo Nickel taking on Cody Brundage. Really good opening round for Nickel, using a superior grappling to control Brundage for large portions of the round. But Brundage was able to defend any serious offensive attacks and remain safe throughout that first round. But in the second, it was more great wrestling and grappling from Nickel. He had a really nice takedown, transitioning from the double leg to a knee pick. And when the fight got to the ground, Nickel moved into mount and was looking for an arm triangle, but Brundage defended it. And when Brundage tried to buck Nickel off of him, he ended up giving up his back. And from there, Nickel sunk in a rear naked choke and got the tap. Nickel said he wasn't too impressed with his performance. You know, I think it was really great coming in here with only five professional fights, all those wins and stoppages, moving to 6-0 and now. He's going to be a real star um, in the middleweight division in the UFC. He just needs to keep grinding, keep doing what he's doing, and he'll eventually get to the top. In the feature prelim, we had Yuri Prohachka taking on Alexander Rakic. What a great fight. First round, Rakic, amazing job, beating up the leg of Prohachka and then in some real good shots upstairs, moving really well and avoiding the tacks of Yuri. But Prohachka did come back with a good right hand near the end of the round and it's set up for a really great second where Prohachka had a great comeback, really putting it on Rakic and making the fight ugly, getting in and just throwing without any regard for defense and went right for the kill, cracked Rakic with some good hard punches and then just threw him to the canvas, jumped on top of him, kept the pressure with some big ground and pound and forced the ref to step in. A really amazing win for Pahachka, and he was basically on one leg and still able to generate some serious power to hurt and eventually finish Rakic. And I would be shocked if he didn't get the next shot at the light heavyweight title against Alex Pajeda. Calvin Cater taking on Aljermaine Sterling. 
Sterling making his featherweight debut. Really good opening round from Sterling, landing the better shots on the feet and able to secure a few takedowns. Cater did a good job of avoiding any damage or positional dominance from the takedowns and, and did work his way back up to his feet for the first few. But Sterling did end the first round being on top. And in the second, Sterling continued his dominant grappling, not allowing Cater to get off any strikes. And by the end of the round, Sterling had secured more takedowns than, than Cater had landed significant strikes. Sterling had six takedowns to Cater's four significant strikes, which is pretty crazy considering the level of striker that Calvin Cater is. In the third, rinse and repeat, Sterling smothering Cater for the entire round, not allowing him to get off any offense at all and even hit Cater with a power bomb, a version of a power bomb, which was super impressive. Uh, and Cater ended the fight with only four significant strikes. It was basically a shutout by Aljo. Great debut at 145 against a really tough opponent. He'll need a bit more before he gets that title shot, but if he continues displays like this, it'll definitely be in the near future. He'll get that chance to be a two-weight champ. Holly Holm taking on the UFC newcomer Kayla Harrison, obviously making her UFC debut. Holm, for some reason, in the first round decided to engage with some grappling with Harrison, who immediately went to her judo background and threw Holm to the canvas with a Haragoshi. But Holm was able to roll through and briefly ended up on top. But Harrison could not be held down. She was just too strong worked her way back up to her feet. This time she stayed on top, landing some big shots to end the round. And in the second, Harrison was eventually able to get the fight back down to the ground again with another Haragoshi and again landed some brutal ground and pound, got to the back, flattened out home, sunk in the choke and got the tap for a really impressive debut in a division that she can most likely had a lot of success in with her grappling and power on the ground. And I really could see the UFC fast-tracking her to a title shot against Raquel Pennington in the very near future. It would not surprise me at all if that's the route that they went. Kicking off the prelims was another fight I was really excited for. Sadiq Youssef taking on Diego Lopez. I mean, what else can you say about Diego Lopez at this point? He comes out, lands a few nice leg kicks to start the round. But when they got in close, he dropped Yusuf with a ruthless uppercut in tight and a left hook that clipped the temple. Yusuf was able to get back to his feet, but got dropped again with another uppercut in close. Lopez jumped on him, took the back, flattened him out, landed a few punches, and forced the ref to step in. I mean, what else can you say about Diego Lopez right now? The dude has the MMA world on fire and it's well-deserved. He is an absolute weapon. And in his post-fight interview, he called out Movsar Ivoyev for a rematch from his UFC debut, which I think would be a great fight. If Lopez has a full camp, I mean, he really tested Movsar, who was a top 145 contender on just five days notice. Give this guy a full camp, book that rematch. I'm here for it. Great fight. The UFC needs to get that done. And then a fight that I think a lot of people were really looking forward to. We had Jalen Turner taking on Hanato Mani Moicano. Really good body kicks from Turner to start, which seemed to really hurt Moicano. Moicano was able to work that into a takedown and control Turner on the ground. But Turner was able to work his way back up to his feet. And near the end of the round, Turner clipped Moicano with a right hand to the temple and a solid left that dropped Moicano. And if Turner would have just gone after him at that point, he definitely would have got the stoppage. But he went for the walk-off KO, didn't get the finish, and allowed Moicano to escape the round. After being dropped and nearly finished in the first, Moicano came out in the second and was able to secure a takedown, nullifying the threat on the feet from Turner. When they hit the ground, Turner did have double butterflies and tried to elevate Moicano off of him. But Moicano just floated and went right into mount, which was really slick. That was very impressive. And from this point, the fight was sliding in Moicano's direction. He was able to eventually land some solid elbows and punches that forced the ref to step in. 
Moicano really starting to put things together now with his career. I mean, his only losses have really been to the upper echelon fighters in the UFC. People like Brian Ortega, Jose Aldo, Chan Sung Jung, Rafael Fiziev, and Rafael Dos Anjos. And he's put together three really impressive wins right now. Each and every single one of them having a viral moment with his Octagon interviews at the end. So really the sky's the limit for this guy right now. And I can't wait to see what he does next. Jessica Andrade taking on Marina Rodriguez. Rodriguez started strong on the feet, landing on Andrade with some good shots upstairs, and Andrade landing some real good leg kicks. But when Rodriguez slipped off one of her own kicks, Andrade took full advantage, taking top position, landing some short, short shots, and eventually moving to side control for the rest of the round. Rodriguez kept touching Andrade in the second, but nothing of any real significance. But Andrade was very unsuccessful on the feet for the majority of the round, except for her leg kicks, until she went and landed some big shots, which really seemed to hurt Rodriguez near the end of the round. And in the third, more of the same, Rodriguez able to land on the feet and landed a really nice back fist, and Andrade just continuing to attack the legs, which she really should have done more of throughout the fight. Rodriguez came real close to also locking up a ninja choke or, or power guillotine, but Andrade managed to pull her head out, and near the end of the round, Andrade dropped Rodriguez with a hard leg kick and tried to swarm her with punches, but Rodriguez managed to avoid taking a lot of the damage coming her way, and this was a very close fight, ended in a split decision, 29-28 times 2 for Andrade and 29-28 by the other judge for Rodriguez. Moving on, we had Bobby Green taking on Jim fucking Miller. Jim Miller making his walk now at UFC 300, 200, and 100 after making his debut all the way back at UFC 89. I think a lot of fans were obviously on the side of Jim Miller for this one, but unfortunately it just didn't work out like it did at UFC 1 and 200. Great opening round from Green, had much more success on the feet, Miller did have his moments, mainly at the beginning and end of the round. And they had a really nice back and forth exchange at the end of the first. But Green really started to put it all together in the second, sticking Miller hard with his jab and putting his punches together with serious accuracy, busting up Miller's eye and nose. And Miller really didn't seem to have an answer for the speed of Green. And it was a really brutal third round. More dominance on the feet from Green, whose hands were just too fast for Miller. Miller did have a brief moment where he appeared to hurt Green, who started to look for a clinch. But with a little under a minute left in the round, Green called on Miller to throw down, pointing at the octagon floor. And Miller obliged, but it was to his detriment because he got cracked bad and went to the floor. Green jumped on him and started throwing strikes, looking for the finish. But he would have probably been better letting Miller get back to his feet as the bell rang before the finish came. But it was a dominant performance by Green, who then made a great call out of Paddy Pimlet for a fight on the Manchester card, which is going to be here in the UK in July. And I would really like to see that fight. I think that's a fan friendly fight and one that should definitely be in consideration for that card in Manchester. Kicking off the card on the early prelims, we had Davison Figueredo taking on Cody Garbrandt. Really great fight to start this card off. A lot of leg kicks being thrown in the first round by Garbrandt, really attacking the legs of Figueredo. Figueredo was also able to land some good shots of his own, some good leg kicks, some nice exchanges. And then in the second round, Figueredo's grappling took over, took Garbrandt down early, flattened him out, landed a few good strikes, and was able to transition right into an arm triangle. Garbrandt was able to tough that out, forcing Figueredo to transition back into the mount. Garbrandt almost bucked his way out, but Figueredo stayed heavy on top, eventually got to the back, sunk in the rear naked choke, and got the tap. Really great performance from Figueredo, and unfortunately, the somewhat downfall of Cody Garbrandt continues. And it was a massive night of bonuses as well. Dana White up in the bonuses to 300,000 instead of the usual 50K, which would be a nice norm going forward. I don't know what 300, but maybe 150 for performance of the night and Friday night bonuses. 
Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje each took home 300 grand for fight of the night. Holloway also got another 300k for performance of the night and Yuri Prochotchka also taken home a $300,000 bonus for his performance of the night against Alexander Rakic. In the big news that most MMA fans have been desperately waiting for, the UFC finally announced it, the return of Conor McGregor taking on Michael Chandler at UFC 303 International Fight Week in Las Vegas scheduled for 170 pounds and this is going to be a big one obviously connor coming off that brutal injury and his return has been kind of teased and tossed around a lot lately but now we finally have confirmation michael chandler welterweight 303 international fight week and in other fight news the ufc also announced Islam Mahachev is going to be taking on Dustin Poirier at UFC 302 for the UFC lightweight belt in New Jersey. Can't wait for that one. Dustin coming off that huge KO win over Benoit St. Denis. And it'll be really good to see Mahachev defend his lightweight belt against an actual lightweight. And not so recently announced, but still a really big fight. Robert Whitaker taking on Hamzat Chemaev in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. This one's going to be live on ABC. It's going to be a great fight, and I can't wait to see how the rest of the card lines up. You've also got Kelvin Gastelum against Daniel Rodriguez, Sharapudin Magomedov versus Iho Pretoria, and Johnny Walker and Volkan Ozdemir so far as the announced fights for that card in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And that's it. That's a wrap for another episode. Episode 5, done and dusted. What a great card UFC 300 was. I just can't get over that Max Holloway knockout. That was just incredible. I'm going to be watching that on a loop for the foreseeable future. Just incredible. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and for all the support. I really appreciate it again. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Any feedback you guys have, leave it in the comments below. Hit us up on Instagram or Twitter at Fight Corner Pod. And until the next one, peace.